Driving a high downforce car is much like pushing past the limit into the unknown. If you've never driven anything with aero before, you have to forget what you think is possible in a car. To benefit from all that downforce, you must push beyond the point at which mechanical grip would start to fall away from you and hope that the team in the wind tunnel know their stuff. Like a portal into another dimension, a whole new world of grip is at your fingertips. This is known as aero grip. Enter the Praga R1T. Awkwardly pretty, isn't it? Supercar Driver has followed Praga's journey and re-entry into the UK motorsport scene closely for some time, but this was our first opportunity to test the turbocharged version of their R1 race car. So what is it exactly? To look at with a fresh pair of eyes, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was a Le Mans prototype. Step a little closer, however, and you'll realise how tiny the thing is. I'm not a large man myself, and even I felt like a giant stood next to it in the Baltic pit garages last month. The R1T draws many cues from world-leading race cars. Its full carbon monocoque forms the basis of its design, coupled with lightweight carbon body panels and a Renault Alpine F4R Formula 2 litre turbocharged engine. For its minuscule platform and footprint, bolting a 380 horsepower engine pulling 410 newton meters of torque to it almost sounds as sensible as lighting a match near an atomic bomb. But hold that thought, it's far more accessible than you might think. And 
And by the way, my eyeballs are trying to exit my skull at the moment. I have absolutely no reason to doubt it. position. We're just trundling back down the pit lane now. Cool everything down a little bit. Let my brain readjust. And we're back in. What a machine. Praga has big plans for 2021. Mark Harrison, the MD of Praga UK, is a passionate and ambitious fellow. You can tell he lives and breathes this brand. Mark, so I've just got out of the car. I'm looking a little bit flustered. <laughs> but happy. happy. Tell us a little bit how this car's arrived to where it is today. Well, I, I start with, I mean, your, your reaction, it's not the first time I've seen that. We, um, <laughs> we had big smiles um, a couple of weeks ago when we won the Brick Car Endurance Championship with um, Danny and Jem, um, they're 18 or 19 years old. and. Uh, which just shows, I think, that there's almost no barrier to this car. That's the, the beauty of this car. Yes, it's a challenge. It's, it's carbon fibre, prototype, style design, all aero. But actually, if you've got the right attitude and, and, and a little bit of ability, clearly, to get in, it's a great car for that. So they were full of smiles. Tell us a little bit about the plans for next year. So we're moving from this year where we've had three cars racing in brick car with a mixture of experienced drivers and relative novices and we've seen the potential there. Next year it's a completely different game where um, we're bringing, there's a new version of the R1 coming next year with improved aero, more usability, so a bigger fuel cell, um, lots of other things that will make it a, a, an easier car to look after and maintain and, and race. And as part of that we're bringing uh, the first 10 in production are going to come to the UK. So five of them to sell to customers and there's really strong demand for those five already we're to the point we're actually going back to the factory now and asking for more probably but the other five we're, we're developing a what we're calling a guest driver program so and um, we're hoping you guys get involved in that but um uh, we've started conversations with people like evo magazine charlie martin's racing with us next season um there's some other names to to throw into that um when we get all those sorted most of whom have been with us today actually testing the car for the first time and it's gone really well so i get lots of smiles on faces so that's gone really well so the idea is that next season we've got a mixed grid of experienced racing drivers, novice racing drivers coming into the new car, but also these guest drivers that will, will fill the seats. And um, the really nice thing is we've, we've sort of gone out and cherry-picked 
some people, some motor race people have already raced, some people who are genuine novices race for the first time, but actually people we know have got the right attitude to this, that they see it as a challenge. It's not an easy car to get hold of, but once you get hold of it, as you said, it's, it's a great car to drive. But they see it as a challenge, firstly, so they don't come into it underestimating you know, what they're getting into. Everybody has said, well, that's why I want to do this. But I want to be part of the, the bigger Praga VR Motorsport team at, at the paddock with 12, 13, 14 cars in our own category, but also to be part of a two-man car team. And uh, I think that's, that's been the really interesting thing, that people are saying, well, yeah, I've already done a bit of racing, but to actually be part of a two-man team where we celebrate the highs, yes. commiserate the lows, all this sort of <laughs> stuff. And when I say commiserate the lows, it fills the team with dread, actually. What are you, but um, but it's, it's, it's really going to take it onto another level for us. And um, that's really with a view to moving on to one mate championship in 2022. For our first chance to drive the R1T, it was truly extraordinary to see what Praga have achieved. Witnessing the reaction of the other drivers as they jumped out was difficult not to reciprocate. You simply can't help but wear a giant grin on your face. Novice or not, have a go in one of these things and I'll eat my hat if you don't do exactly the same.